Hello. Welcome to tonight's bedtime story by Lucid Tales. I hope your day has been relaxing and kind. But whether it has been softly falling snow or howling blizzard for you, it's time to relax now. Find somewhere comfortable, maybe your bed or a favourite armchair, and make sure you're ready for sleep. Take a few deep breaths if you can, in and out, and feel the freedom in your chest, the little loosening that means it's time for bed. Tonight's story is a continuation from our last two, and tells the story of Thor and Loki, the Alfi and Roskva in Utgarda. On walked Thor, and on walked Loki. The Alfi and Roskva ran a little ahead on their swift little feet, as sure as mountain goats on the rocky scree of the mountains. At last, in the heat of the afternoon, when the land around became somewhat more welcoming, they saw far ahead a castle with towers that rose so high into the sky they seemed to touch the clouds. As they came closer over the miles between them, the walls of that castle seemed to stretch so high they would have to crane their necks back behind their spines to see all the way up. When they approached the gate, it was locked shut, but the bars were so broad and the gaps between so gaping that they slipped through regardless and entered right on into the great hall at the centre of the castle. The door was thrown open, and all throughout were benches and tables, and sat at them Jotnar, who would have dwarfed great Skrymir by head and shoulders twice over. Thor and Loki, the Alfi and Roskva, felt very small, walking among such towering beings. Thor did not like it, and Loki neither, for what god likes to feel shrunken and childlike before another creature? At the end of the hall, on a great throne, sat a Jotun greater than all the others, the king and ruler of this place, Utgarda Loki. Maybe Loki felt even more the sharp contrast of their size due to their shared name, or perhaps he was just in a harsh mood as he often was. Welcome, small ones, Utgarda Loki boomed over the noise in the hall. Rumour travels slowly this far away from the rest of the world, but let me guess at you. This little fellow I think is Thor of Oskarda, and his slim companion, perhaps my namesake, Loki. The two children I do not recognise. But you all must be far bigger than I am perceiving you. Your fame spreads before you like wildfire, even here. What great feats could you little ones perform? No one feasts here who does not first impress us with their strength or art or cunning. Come, show me your skills. Loki, in the quiet, crackling storm that preceded his sometime outbursts, strode forward from the back of the party and said loudly, I can eat more and faster than anyone else here. I challenge anyone here to beat me. But Garda Loki laughed long and hard. And he said, that is indeed a feat, if you can do it, and we must try you at it. He summoned a being called Logi from among the benches, and between them set a great feast along the slab of a wooden table. Loki started at one end, and Logi at the other, to meet in the middle. Loki devoured every scrap of meat off the bones, and met Logi squarely in the middle of the table. But when he looked ahead, he saw that Logi had eaten not just the meat, but the bones and platters and table too. And so he lost in his contest. But Garda Loki looked then to the Alfi with a broad grin and asked him what he could do. The Alfi replied boldly that he would run a race against anyone in that hall and win. But Garda Loki laughed long and hard, and he said, That is indeed a feat, if you can do it and we must try you at it. He summoned a being called Hugi from among the benches, and together they all went out into the open air, where there was a running course already laid out. They began the first race, 
and Thialfi ran like the wind was on his heels, but Hugi outstripped him by so far that he turned back and met Thialfi again in the middle of the course. Better luck now, Thialfi, said Utgarda Loki. Try out of three. You did not win, but I do not think I have seen anyone come closer to Hugi than that. So they ran a second race. But this time, when Hugi turned around, the Alfi was still an arrow shot behind. They ran the third race. And this time, when Hugi turned back to meet him, the Alfi had not even run halfway. And so he lost in his contest. Come now, Thor, said Utgarda Loki. Which of your great strengths will you pull on? What feat would you perform? Thor grinned a broad grin and threw his head back. I will outdrink anyone here. Let us have a drinking contest. Utgarda Loki laughed long and hard, and he said, That is indeed a feat, if you can do it, and we must try you at it. He led them back inside, and roared for a servant to bring him the drinking horn the people of his hall used for their contests. It was as long as Thor's, it was as long as Thor's arm, and right thick, and filled with strong mead. A good drinker can drain this horn in a single draught. Most can drain it in two. But the creature who cannot empty it in three is a poor drinker indeed. But Thor was not cowed, and merely grinned again. He drank far more than this in a single draught before, and he had a mighty thirst on him now. He tipped the horn up and drank long and deep until it seemed that surely he must have emptied its entire length. But the drink kept coming. And finally, gasping for breath, he paused to look down into the horn to see that the level of mead had barely lowered. Well, that was a good attempt, said Utgarda Loki. I would have thought you would be able to drink it in a single draught, given the stories of your prowess, but I'm sure you will finish it on the second try. Thor silently brought the horn to his lips again, a dark scowl furrowing his brow at the Jotun's mockery. He drank and drank and drank, gulping mead for as long as his breath held. When it seemed he must have drained the entire vessel, it was still heavy in his hand. When he felt he must have drunk more than twice what the horn could hold, it was still heavy in his hand. And when it seemed he must have drunk at least three times its contents, it was still heavy in his hand. At last he had to cease and gasp for breath once more. He looked into the horn, and blow me away, but it did hardly seem to have emptied at all. It was still full, almost to an inch from the brim. If you are holding back that much for your last drink, you will have a hard time, Utgarda Loki said. But try it nonetheless. We will find a different feat for you. Thor, scowling mightily, tipped his head back and drank and drank and drank his throat bobbing in great gulps as he drained what felt like a hogshead of mead from that strange horn. Finally, when he could drink no more and his stomach felt sluggish with liquid, he drew the horn from his lips, but it was still more than two-thirds full. And so he lost his contest. Come, Thor, said Utgarda Loki. Try again. Which of your great strengths will you pull on? What feat would you perform? Thor, simmering with anger, grated out between his teeth. One of strength. Utgarda Loki laughed long and hard, and he said, This is not much of a feat, and I would not suggest it if I had not already seen your weakness in drinking. Try to pick up my great grey cat off the floor of the hall. Thor turned to the fireside to see the great grey cat lying, purring before the flames. It was very large but Thor had lifted many a heavier-looking creature than this. It was a joke of a feat, but he ground his teeth and kept quiet. He'd fling the damn thing up to the roof. Scooping one hand under its broad belly, he looped them together and lifted and hefted and pulled. It barely moved, so he set his feet on the floor and he lifted and hefted and pulled once again. This time, the great grey cat came up onto its feet. So Thor set his feet firmly on the floor, 
and lifted and hefted and pulled one more time. This time the great grey cat came up onto its paws and only a little higher still, one single paw lifting lightly off the floor. And so he lost his second contest. Come, Thor, said Utgarda Loki. You are but small, and the cat is very great. We must learn not to set the Asir tests like we ourselves might fulfil. But try again. Which of your great strengths will you pull on this time? What feat would you perform? Give me someone to fight, Thor roared. Small though I be, I will defeat anyone you set against me. Utgarda Loki laughed long and hard, and he said, That is indeed a feat, if you can do it, and we must try you at it. But I will be kind. You have struggled much today. You may fight my old nurse, Eli. Into the hall came an old crone, bent and crooked with age. Thor stared in dismay. I cannot fight an old woman. Oh, worry not, Thor. She has brought down fighters that look no weaker than you. Try your hand against her. Reluctant and ashamed, Thor stepped up to the mark, and in his unwillingness he was nearly bested in the first instant by the sudden, shocking grip of those gnarled hands. He readied himself and fought back, grappling with the old nurse like a prize fighter, but she steadily and slowly bore him to the ground nonetheless, until he was forced to a single knee. She could not bear him down any further, but equally he could not rise. And so he lost his third contest. Oh, pa! Utgarda Loki said. Well, there is no point in offering you anyone else here to fight. There are none here weaker than Eli. But it is late, and you must stay the night. So Thor and Loki, Roskva and Thialfi, were treated with great hospitality the rest of the night, and awoke at dawn to leave. But Garda Loki walked with them out of the mighty fortress and down the road a little way, making pleasant conversation. At last he drew to a halt. I think here we part, my friends. Thor was in much greater cheer under the broad sky and away from the hall of his humiliation, and merrily said, It is a shame you will remember us so poorly. We made for weak guests indeed. But Utgarda Loki smiled. Now you are far enough outside the bounds of my home, I will tell you the truth. Had I known the terrible strengths of your party, I would never have allowed you within a hundred leagues of here. You nearly brought us to ruin last night. And me, the night before. His face seemed to shift and change, and for a blink of a moment they saw the face of Skrumir grinning out at them, before Utgarda Loki's face covered it once more like clouds across the sky. My knapsack was fastened with trickery, which is why you could not open it. Three times that night you levelled a blow at me that would surely have killed me. But look there at that mountain. Do you see its three valleys? Each time you raised your hammer to crush my skull, I drew that mountain in the way between us, and so your hammer sunk deep into the rock rather than striking me down. Loki, you are indeed a ravenous devourer. In the eating contest, you came up against Logi himself, the wildfire that swallows all in its path. The Alfie, you nearly shamed me in your race with Yugi, for Yugi was my thought, and had you come any closer to its speed, I should have had to consider myself a slow man indeed. Thor, when you drank from that horn, it was like watching a miracle, for the end of the horn was deep in the sea and when you drank, you pulled it back from the land with such strength I half thought it would all be swallowed. You have created something new, for I do not think the oceans shall ever be still again, but rise and fall in the swell and ebb of what you drank away. Which is, of course, how the tides came to be created. But at Gardaloki continued, it was when you picked up the great grey cat that fear truly settled into us all. For that cat was no cat but the Midgard serpent, that encircles the earth. When you lifted one of its paws off the ground, we all trembled, for had you succeeded in any more, you may have drawn it up into the sky and brought Ragnarok crashing around us. Even in your wrestling with Ellie, there was a marvel, for she is old age, and there is no one alive who will not be brought low by old age should they live long enough. 
and yet you were only forced to a single need, and no further. Between you, you have awesome and terrible power, and I will not permit you to come back this way again. Thinking an ambush, Thor grasped Mjolnir in his hand and prepared to take aim once more at the cunning Jotun's head. But all that came was a laugh on the wind and the whispering of shadows. Utgarda Loki and all of that great castle faded under the sunlight like a dream, and the great mountain appeared to them as a pleasant meadow. And Thor never did come to Utgarda again. Good night. Sleep well. And I will see you soon for another bedtime story. <laughs>